This is our presentation on the lake biome by Michael Todd, Greg Moore, and Wyatt Saltzman. Lakes are large bodies of fresh water that are found on land. They are not part of the ocean, which is a key difference between lakes and lagoons, and they are much deeper and larger than ponds. Lakes tend to be attached to rivers to allow them to fill and drain. Lakes are found in all climates and places around the world. This is our lake biome's food web. It is based off of Lake Superior's ecosystem. The main producers in our food web are the cytoplankton, flagellates, and green algae. Very small animals like the quagga mussels, mollusks, and calanoids eat these producers. Moving up in the chain, we can see fish like the lake sturgeon, herring, and yellow perch, which eat the smaller animals such as the quagga mussels. And lastly, the lake trout, chinook salmon, and rainbow trout each eat the smaller fish. All the fish in the lake can be killed by the lamprey parasite. Symbiotic relationships are also present within our food web. There is lots of competition in the lake biome between fish and other organisms. One example of competition in our food web is between the lake whitefish and lake sturgeon. They are both trying to eat the quagga mussels and this forces competition between the two as they will both be vying for the meal and only one, or one of the organisms will be able to eat the mussel. The species that is less suited must either adapt or die out. Food webs exhibit predation all the time, as when you go up a food web, the animals above are eating the animals below. In our food web, an example of predation is the yellow perch and how it eats the mayfly nymphs. The mayfly nymphs are located below the yellow perch, making the nymph prey for the perch. This is just one example of predation in our food web, as it happens throughout the food web and this is how ecosystems survive. If animals didn't have predators, their population would grow too large and would disrupt the whole food web. Parasitism is another symbiotic relationship within our food web, in which one organism, the parasite, benefits while the other one is harmed. In our food web, parasitism is shown through the sea lamprey. The lamprey feeds on larger fish, in turn killing them. It takes all the nutrients from the host and is only able to survive by using the host. In the picture is an example of a sea lamprey latched onto a fish, sucking the nutrients out of it. Once the lamprey is latched onto the fish, there isn't much it can do to get rid of the lamprey. Mutualism is the symbiotic relationship in which both animals are benefiting from the relationship. Mutualism is very common in most ecosystems, and in ours it is not too common, yet an example of it in our food web is when the fungi and algae work together to form lichens. Commensalism is when one organism benefits and the other takes no harm or no foul. The pond weed in our ecosystem provides shelter and protection to some animals of the lake, and those animals are benefiting from this protection and shelter while the pondweed is not gaining anything nor losing anything from this relationship. Patterns of dispersion. Dispersion is the dissemination or scattering of organisms over periods within a given area over the earth. There are three main types, clumped, uniform, and random. Clumped dispersion is when individuals in a population are clustered together, creating some patches with many individuals and some patches with no individuals. Uniform dispersion is when individuals are spaced evenly throughout an area. Random dispersion is when individuals are arranged without any pattern or form. An example of random dispersion in lakes is green algae. Algae forms in random parts of lakes that have excessive amounts of nutrients. This is random as the algae will not always have a set place to grow and the nutrients that they need will be in different places throughout the lake. A population of lake herring is an example of clump dispersion in our food web. This is because they tend to swim in schools and are generally clumped together. Lake sturgeons are an example of uniform dispersion. This is because they are solitary and generally live on the bottom of the lake where they have a territory of where they feed. This is a survivorship curve of the lake sturgeon. The y-axis is the number of sturgeon, and the x-axis is the age. At 10 years of age, the sturgeon population is relatively low. As they get to around 20 to 30 years, the number of sturgeon is at its highest. 
the number of surgeons goes down from around 30 and levels out at around 60 years. The nitrogen cycle plays an important role in lakes. The steps fall into the following classifications. Nitrogen fixation, nitrogen assimilation, ammonification, nitrification, and den denitrification. Nitrogen fixation, in which nitrogen gas is converted into inorganic nitrogen compounds, is mostly accomplished by certain bacteria and blue-green algae. Nitrates and ammonia resulting from nitrogen fixation are assimilated into the specific tissue compounds of algae and higher plants. Animals then ingest these algae and plants, converting them into their own body compounds. The remains of all living things and their waste products are decomposed by microorganisms in the process of ammonification. Algal blooms are a major, pro are a major problem that occur in lakes and are, have something to do with the nitrogen cycle. They are also formed, formed from excessive nutrients in the water. The algae grows extremely rapidly and an excessive amount of dead algae is formed. The decaying process consumes lots of oxygen in the water and this can be very harmful for fish that are living in the lake. The carbon cycle is the series of processes by which carbon compounds are interconverted in the environment, chiefly involving the incorporation of carbon dioxide into living tissue by photosynthesis and its return into the atmosphere through respiration, the decay of dead organisms, and the burning of fossil fuels. An example of a carbon cycle in lakes is dissolved organic carbon, or DOC. It refers to a broad group of molecules that come from the breakdown of organic matter in the watershed. Dissolved organic ca carbon in lakes and other freshwater sources is one of the greatest cycle reservoirs of organic matter on Earth, accounting for the same amount of carbon as the atmosphere and up to 20% of all organic carbon. In general, organic com carbon compounds are a result of de decomposition processes from dead organic matter, such as plants and marine organisms. The water cycle is a cycle of processes by which water circulates between the Earth's oceans, atmospheres, and land, involving precipitation as rain and snow, drainage in streams and rivers, and return to the atmosphere by evaporation and transpiration. An example of this cycle in lakes can be looked at as water across the surface of lakes evaporates, turning into water vapor condensation in the atmosphere. It lowers, this often lowers the water level of lakes. Water also falls from the sky as rain or snow in participation, and this can drastically change water levels of lakes and sometimes cause flooding. Water on nearby ground is also collected as runoff in, in lakes, changing the water level. And the inflows and outflows of water in lakes is mainly controlled by the climate and the nature that the lake is in. The lake ecosystem is damaged and hurt by human pollution as nearby towns and cities have a large impact on the environment. Toxins that are released into the water end up hurting the animals and plants living in it more than we know, and that ends up hurting the ecosystem as a whole. Industrial dumping may kill off some plants, and we might not think much of it, yet as those plants die, it affects the whole food chain, as whatever eats those plants may not have enough food, and they may die affecting the food chain as it goes up. Industrial dumping particulate pollution from combustion engines and agricultural fertilizers and pesticides can end up in rivers and streams either falling there directly or carried to the waterways by rain into lakes. Toxin pollu toxic pollutants may wipe out an ecosystem entirely, but even small amounts or less lethal compounds can have an effect on wildlife. Some of these toxins can lead to genetic mutation, altering the life cycle of the organisms and cause birth defects. Human activity on lakes often can harm the habitat, in turn hurting the ecosystem. Diverting water for irrigation can drastically change the ecosystem for lakes, as water is being pulled away from the lake that it would not normally have been. Also, the creation of dams for hydroelectric power can also cause the ecosystem to change in the long run. It causes an excessive buildup on water on one side, completely changing the environment as well as the use of human vehicles like boats on lakes can pollute the water from oil and gasoline. Humans also can introduce invasive species to a lake which can throw off the entire ecosystem. Many species like the blackfin cisco 
and blue walleye lived in great, in the Great Lakes but are now extinct due to overfishing and invasive species. Here is our works cited page and thank you for watching.